Well, the issue of predictive biomarkers for anti-PD-1 or PDL1 drugs is a very, a very big challenge, you know, because uh, if you give this drug every anti-PD-1 or PDL1 to unselected patients, uh, the majority of patients will, will have disease progression at uh, their first tumor assessment. So these drugs are very expensive. These drugs are also can also cause uh, some uh, uh, severe side effects. So it's important to to, to find means to, to select uh, to select the patients in order to identify the, the patient that will benefit uh, from treatment. Uh, of course, the pd one expression assessed by immunohistochemistry is the most logical and prob probably the easiest way to, to select the patient. But pd one is the pd one is not uh, a perfect biomarker because uh, uh, we have different tests and it's uh, more or less a mess to 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 find uh, what uh, which test is the right test and how concordant are these different tests and also the 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 second issue is due to the special heterogeneity of uh, pd one expression uh, throughout the tumor and therefore uh, you can have false negative because the biopsy has been done in an era or where, where the cells do not express PDL1, while in other areas of the tumor you have a PDL1 expression. So you can have false negative, and you can you can also have uh, false positive results because uh, uh, of um, an oncogenic expression of PDL1 outside of uh, any uh, immune response. So uh, these drugs, this is tumor. Sorry, these tumors that uh, are PDL1 positive. Uh, will not respond to the treatment. So we, it is an imperfect uh, biomarker, but it is an enrichment biomarker. Um, if you consider a, a population of patients, the, the higher the, the higher the PD1 expression level will be, uh, the higher the magnitude of benefit will be. Uh, if you compare, uh, for example, nivolumab to to docetaxel, so it is an enrichment factor. But for a patient, the the PD1 level of expression is linked to to the probability of response. If the patient will respond to the drug, if the, the duration of response and the death of response will be the same if it is PDL1 or if it is uh, positive or if it is PDL1 negative, you know. Uh, so it is linked to the probability of response. And we have to find other biomarkers, and there is a very uh, a lot of uh, biomarkers that are um, under study uh, actu actually. We have, for example, some tumor characteristics in terms of uh, mutational load, in terms of specific neuroantigens. We have also to look at the immune response uh, in terms of immune signature because these drugs work only if there is uh, already an immune response against the tumor. Uh, so it is a very big area of uh, very extensive research at this point. But I, I think for probably for the two or three years we, that will come pd one expression for the non-small cell lung cancer, we remain uh, the, probably the most useful uh, biomarker. And it is now a decision a decision-making biomarker because uh, for the first-line treatment uh, we used to select the patient on the level of pd one expression and the patient with pd one expression more than in 50% of the tumor cells can receive uh, pembrolizumab as a first-line treatment.